A couple of years ago, I released a series of videos discussing which ThinkPads I felt were the best for somebody to buy on a budget. I called this the ThinkPad on a Budget series, and in these videos I discussed many of the early Lenovo ThinkPads, starting with the transition from IBM to Lenovo and leading up to the T420 and the T430, which I said at the time were the best value ThinkPads you could buy. I pretty much shied away from talking about any of the newer models other than saying how junk they were, and in hindsight these videos seemed more like me rambling on about the different specs and then saying whether it was a good laptop or not, as opposed to me really saying what's good or bad about these laptops. In the two years since I made those videos, I've used and worked on several different models, some newer and some older, and there have been some new developments within the ThinkPad community that has led me to revisit certain models or at least update my opinion on them. I should note before starting this video that this is not a list of what I think are the best ThinkPads, the cheapest, or the best performing. So before the keyboard warriors head to the comments section asking why I didn't recommend the X230 or the T480 or the W701DS, I'm not saying those models are bad or that I don't recommend them. If you're happy with it, then it's fine. They're still solid laptops. My intent with this video is to show three different laptops that I think are currently, in early 2020, the best value ThinkPads. These laptops offer the best performance for the amount of money that you are paying. Are they the cheapest? Are they the absolute fastest? No. But for the money that you're paying, and the amount of upgrades and modifications and community support that you have with these machines, I think they are the best value. So this video is going to be split up into two parts. In the first part of the video, I'm going to talk about which three models I recommend, and why I recommend them, as well as what kind of upgrades you can expect with them, what kind of performance you can get. In the second part of the video, I'm going to talk about why I recommend these specific laptops over other models, so that nobody thinks I'm deliberately attacking their favorite ThinkPad. So the three laptops that I recommend, at least the three ThinkPads I recommend here in early 2020, are the T420, the T430, and the T440P. There's a lot of things I like about these laptops. You can find them in fully working condition for very cheap prices. You can usually find them all set and ready to go on eBay for less than $200, or even less than $150. Sometimes you can buy one bare bones or broken for less than $50, and then fix it up or upgrade it yourself. Not only are these laptops cheap, but the replacement parts and upgrades for them are pretty cheap as well. Some replacement parts you can still buy directly from Lenovo, and there are also plenty of new or new old stock parts online for affordable prices, as well as aftermarket replacements. These laptops were mass produced for several years, and in the case of the T420 and T430, they share many of the same parts. So if you can't find a specific part, or it's a little too expensive to buy on its own, you can usually buy another broken machine for a cheap price and harvest parts from it. These laptops all still offer respectable performance, even before making any upgrades and they can run Windows 10 or your preferred flavor of Linux with ease. You can also Hackintosh these laptops fairly easily. The T430 and other newer ThinkPads are all officially supported by Windows 10, so you shouldn't have any issues with support or getting drivers to run on them, and Windows 10 works perfectly fine on the T420 as well. However, you might have to hunt around a little bit for drivers because Lenovo isn't officially supporting this anymore. So there are a few things that all of these laptops have in common. They can all be upgraded to 16 gigabytes of RAM. They support two different types of internal storage. They have a 14 inch 16 by nine widescreen display, a DVD drive, which can be swapped out for an additional hard drive or solid state drive, four USB ports, one of which is an always on port you can use for charging your phone or tablet or whatever, a VGA port, an SD card reader, an ethernet jack, headphone jack, and some type of display port, either a full size or mini display port. They all use 6-cell batteries that are flush with the back of the unit, and 9-cell batteries that stick out just enough that they turn into a very convenient carrying handle. The T420 and the T430 work with the same batteries as well. And all three will work with a mechanical dock that allows for additional ports and easy conversion to a desktop setup. All of these laptops also have socketed processors, which means they are upgradable. They're around 13 inches wide, 9 inches deep, and just over an inch thick. So they're definitely not thin and light by today's standards, but in my opinion, they're still fairly portable. They're light enough that they're not going to strain your back, and you can hold them in your lap fairly comfortably. They're housed in a plastic casing that has some rubberized reinforcements, and an inner magnesium alloy skeleton that helps protect the internal components. 
They all have spill-resistant keyboards, a decently sized touchpad, and the famous pointing device known as the track point, which, despite the claims of other YouTubers, is still an excellent way to use your mouse. The keyboards can be illuminated either by the think light on the T420 and T430, or with a backlight built into the keyboard on some T430s and T440Ps. If your version of those two models came with a keyboard that doesn't have the backlight, it can easily be swapped out for a keyboard that does. Some versions of these laptops also came with a fingerprint reader or a smart card reader for extra security, and you can add these or remove these if you would like. The T420 and the T430 are more similar to each other than they are to the T440P. Both of these laptops are a bit on the older side, having been released in 2011 and 2012 respectively, but both of them still perform fairly solidly for most modern day tasks. For quite a while, I used a T430 as my daily driver, and I edited a lot of my YouTube videos using it. Many people in the ThinkPad community consider these to be the last classic ThinkPads due to them being the last models that had many of the classic ThinkPad characteristics, such as an all-black finish, a latch holding the display closed, the ThinkLight, a physical wireless on and off switch, a variety of legacy ports, indicator lights for things like drive and wireless activity, lots of expandability and upgradability, the barrel style power connector, dedicated volume and sound buttons, and in the case of the T420, the classic 7 row keyboard. The T430 introduced the still somewhat controversial 6 row chiclet or island style keyboard. However, it's still very easy to swap the T420's keyboard in, and you can patch the embedded controller to retain all of the functionality of the keyboard layout. In addition to having a standard 2.5 inch drive bay, these laptops also have a 3G modem slot underneath them that can use MSAT SSDs. If you don't use DVDs very much, you can easily swap out the DVD drive for a hard drive caddy, and the drives are hot swappable so you can swap out the two whenever you'd like. An Express Card 34 slot is present on both laptops, which allows for more expandability in the form of adding additional ports, some type of card reader, additional storage even, or an external graphics card. So the T420, it is the older of the two, so it is showing more age compared to the T430. It's the last ThinkPad you can get with a 56K modem built in. It lacks any USB 3.0 ports, which for some people may not be a problem, but if you regularly transfer files or are accessing an external drive, it can be a huge inconvenience. The Sandy Bridge processors used in this machine run a little bit hotter than the Ivy Bridge chips used in the T430, which limits the processors you can put in this machine without resorting to BIOS mods, and it also does hurt battery life a little bit. Even the dedicated GPU option is kind of useless nowadays for anything beyond basic tasks, and Lenovo has pretty much ended their support for this machine. Despite that, it is still a very good laptop, and being the last generation of ThinkPads to have a classic keyboard is a huge draw for people. The T430 does have a lot of advances though. It has better onboard graphics, better battery life, native USB 3.0 support, and processors that run a bit cooler. So I often recommend the T430 to people. With the exception of the move to the 6-row keyboard, the T430 is pretty much all upgrades to me compared to the T420. And as I mentioned, it's very easy to swap in the 7-row classic keyboard from a T420. Recently, the ThinkPad community unlocked the BIOS in the T430 using what's called Ivy Rain. You can now remove the wireless card whitelist, you can overclock the processor, disable Intel management engine, things like that very easily. So if you want to do something like Hackintosh the laptop or put in a better wireless card, you can do that now. So even though none of these laptops are still my daily driver, I love these laptops. And even with my loving bias aside, I still consider them to be solid laptops for anyone on a budget or someone who's just looking to get into ThinkPads. The ThinkPad T440P embodied many of the controversial design changes brought on with the Haswell refresh of ThinkPads such as the removal of physical buttons on the touchpad and track point, the think light, hot swappable DVD drives, dedicated volume buttons, the physical wireless switch, indicator lights for things like wireless and drive activity, and moving to a different style power connector and docking connector that rendered the T440P incompatible with older power adapters, docks, and accessories. However, I still recommend this laptop for a number of reasons, despite some of its inherent design flaws. It's the last 14-inch ThinkPad to have a socketed, upgradable processor. It also has fully upgradable RAM and fully upgradable storage. The batteries used are removable. And this laptop is, in my opinion, the easiest ThinkPad to upgrade. You simply remove two screws off the bottom, and the bottom cover comes off, 
and you can access pretty much everything from there. And this is also one of the last ThinkPads that has the 9-cell battery that sticks out of the back, making for a nice handle. I just love that. It's the first 14-inch ThinkPad to be configurable with a 1080p IPS display, quad-core processors, and 802.11 AC Wi-Fi from the factory. The awful buttonless clunk pad can be easily swapped out with the T450 touchpad. In addition to just being a better touchpad overall, it brings back the dedicated trackpoint buttons that we all know and love. And while the DVD drive bay is no longer hot swappable, you can still swap the DVD drive for a hard drive caddy if you so desire. Having those better quality displays for this machine without having to do any sort of modifications and having just the overall internal hardware improvements make up somewhat for the design changes with this machine. And even as a devout lover of the classic ThinkPads, I still love the T440p and use it on occasion. For most general computing tasks, all of these laptops still perform well. Even with the original dual-core i5s and i7s that most of these machines came with, they still hold their own. And all of these can be upgraded to better quad-core processors that rival the performance of modern laptops, for hundreds of dollars cheaper than buying a modern laptop. As I said, I used my T430 to edit many of my YouTube videos, and it could handle 1080p 60 frame per second video without any issues, and I'm sure if you were in a pinch, these could handle 4K video editing as well. For coding, basic 3D design work like CAD or things like Photoshop, these laptops still do the job. And with there being so many aftermarket upgrades or modifications available for these machines, such as the unlocked T430 BIOS and display mods for these machines, and NVMe storage adapters for the Express card slot, the ThinkPad community is making it really hard for these laptops to die. On that topic, battery life on these isn't quite as good as modern laptops, but I still have more than enough battery life to get through a few lectures, a couple of meetings, or a commute home from work. And if the battery does die on you, it's just two clicks and you swap in a new battery, so you can easily carry multiple batteries with you if you know you're going to be away from an outlet for a long time. And doing things like tweaking the power settings, dimming your display, or undervolting the processor can help you stretch that battery life a little bit more when you need it to. So definitely the biggest disadvantage of these older machines is the graphics performance, mostly if you want to use these for gaming or 3D rendering. Even when these laptops were new, they were not designed to be gaming laptops. And the NVIDIA Quattro cards that the T420s and T430s have, in some cases, they're better suited for 3D design and things like CAD than they are for gaming. The T440p's GT730M can handle some modern games at lower settings, but if you want something for gaming, you're better off using a desktop or a laptop that supports external graphics cards or just has a beefier internal graphics card. The T420 and T430 can use an external graphics card using the Express Card slot. You can buy a PCI Express to Express Card adapter on eBay for around $50 get a graphics card of your choosing, and an external power supply for the card, and then have a much better graphics setup. In my opinion, having this as an option really helps extend the lifespan of these laptops in terms of how usable they are. The T440p unfortunately has no way of using an external graphics card. It doesn't have an express card slot, it doesn't have any type of Thunderbolt port, and there aren't even any internal mini PCIe slots that can be tapped into. Maybe one of the smart people in the ThinkPad community can come up with some sort of mod that can be used to boost the graphics capabilities of the T440p. One of the other major disadvantages with these laptops are definitely the displays. It's pretty much universally accepted in the ThinkPad community that these displays are junk. This was something I pretty much glossed over entirely in my original Buyer's Guide series, as a recent commenter pointed out. With the X220 and X230, you could configure them with an IPS display. And the larger 15-inch ThinkPads at that time had higher quality TN panels that sometimes rivaled the quality of IPS panels. Meanwhile, the T420 and the T430 were stuck with awful, washed-out, low-contrast 1366 by 768 and 1600 by 900 panels. At least they aren't as bad as some of those passive matrix displays that plagued cheaper laptops in the 1990s, but these displays still look horrible. The T440p came with these same junk displays, but had the advantage of also being configurable with a much better 1080p IPS display. And with the T440p, displays are drop-in replacements, so you can very, very easily upgrade your T440p display to a 1080p IPS one if it came with one of the lower quality screens. 
In recent years, some of the smarter people over in the ThinkPad community have made custom adapter boards that you can buy that plug into the T420 or T430's motherboard. These allow you to use a higher quality 1080p or even 1440p IPS display, which help these laptops stand out against modern laptops that have much better displays. So now we get into the second part of the video, where I talk about why I recommended those three models as opposed to other ThinkPads, older, newer, concurrent models from that time period. This is why. So when it comes to older ThinkPads, machines like the T60, the T61, T400, T500, W701DS, why don't I recommend those? They're not bad laptops. If you find a good deal on one and you're happy with it, then by all means use it. But the performance that you get for the price that you pay is not quite as high as with the T420, T430, or T440p. When it comes to machines like the X220 and X230, the 15-inch workstation ThinkPads, things like that, those machines just aren't as common as the T-series of ThinkPads. So that makes buying them a little more expensive, and it makes replacement parts generally more expensive. The higher performance of the workstation ThinkPads and the ultra-portability of the X-series makes them more desirable, even though they're older, so that also drives up costs. When it comes to machines like the T440, T450, T460, and T470, and other ThinkPads from that era, they cost, at the very least, the same as these older ThinkPads, but usually they still cost more since they're newer. But they're less upgradable, there's less replaceable parts, they don't have upgradable processors, and they use low-voltage Ultrabook processors, so the performance is actually worse than that of these older mobile processors in the T420, T430, and T440p. The only real advantage of these machines is that they are slimmer, they're lighter, they have better battery life, and with some of the newer ones, they have better displays. So if you value a portable laptop, these are better. But if you want the most performance for what you're paying, they are not better. So now let's talk about the T480. Now there is a bit of an argument for buying a T480 as opposed to buying something like a T440p, because you can sometimes find a used or refurbished T480 for around the same price as it would cost you to max out the performance of a T440p. In fact, in Wolfgang's recent video about what he said was the best used ThinkPad, he said the T480 was the best. He made some good points, and the T480 is a solid laptop, but I do respectably disagree with him on that. If you have $500 to spend, the T480 is probably a better value than the T440p. You're getting the same performance in a thinner and lighter laptop that is much newer and will be supported by Lenovo for a lot longer. You have better battery life, it accepts better displays, it accepts external graphics cards, it has Thunderbolt support, it takes up to 64 gigabytes of RAM as opposed to 16. So at first, there's a lot of reasons to go for a T480 as opposed to a T440p. But if you don't have that much money, if you don't have $500 to blow on a laptop, you can get the T440p or one of those other older ThinkPads. As you save up more money, you can upgrade it. You can put in a faster processor, you can put in more RAM, you can put in more storage. With the T480, unless you have all of that money up front, it's just not an option. Wolfgang also said that you could swap a classic keyboard into the T480 because, well, the ThinkPad T25 keyboard can be swapped in. Technically, he is right there. However, it really is not viable, and let me explain. With the T430 and other Ivy Bridge generation ThinkPads, swapping in a classic keyboard is very easy. In some cases, it's a drop-in replacement, and it's pretty easy to flash the BIOS to accept all of the keys correctly. There were 18 different ThinkPad models manufactured between 2009 and 2013 that used the same keyboard. This means that it's easy to find a replacement aftermarket keyboard online, brand new, and if you can't or if you don't want to pay for a brand new keyboard, you can source one from an existing ThinkPad. In the case of swapping a T25 keyboard into the T480, we are talking about a keyboard that was produced for one limited edition laptop that was manufactured for less than a year with almost non-existent replacements available. Good luck finding one. And the keyboard doesn't just plop in like in the T430. You also need a ThinkPad 25th Anniversary Edition palm rest and touchpad because the T25 keyboard does not fit into the T480 chassis. And you also have to make major modifications to the bottom cover and the palm rest. And after all of that work, you still have a keyboard that doesn't work properly because as of early 2020, 
there is no BIOS flash that can be done to get all of the T25 keys working correctly. So while it is technically true that you could swap a classic keyboard into a T480, it is definitely not something that is viable for most people. And my last thing about the T480 is I have some concerns about the long-term reliability of this machine. I am working on a full review of the T480, so I will talk about this more in that video. But there have been some issues with the Thunderbolt controller in the T480, as well as every other ThinkPad that has the Thunderbolt port. Lenovo recently released a patch that supposedly fixes this problem, but we don't know if this is a full fix or just a stopgap fix. The Thunderbolt controller issues of the T480 and other ThinkPads with a Thunderbolt port could become like the next ThinkPad T61 with the graphics card issues. In addition, with the T480, Lenovo switched to charging via USB Type-C as opposed to a proprietary power connector. With older ThinkPads, the power jack is a separate part that then plugs into the motherboard. So if you damage the power jack, it's a $7 replacement off of eBay, and it's pretty easy to just unplug the old port and plug a new one in. With the T480, the USB Type-C ports are soldered onto the motherboard. So if one of those ports break, you've now lost full functionality of that port, unless you know how to solder or you want to get the motherboard replaced. Now, of course, I'm not saying that every old laptop lasts forever, but issues like the Thunderbolt controller and having charging ports that are not easily replaceable do make me question how long the T480 will last after several years of use. And what about ThinkPads newer than the T480? Well, many of them are removing useful features from these laptops, such as user-removable batteries, upgradable RAM, or replaceable Wi-Fi card. So it's little things like that that make the newer ThinkPads less of an easy buy for me. With pretty much every laptop up to and including the T480, I have no problem recommending them. They're great laptops. But there's millions of older ThinkPads out there that still work perfectly, so if you want a good quality laptop that is going to last you for a long time and you don't want to spend an outrageous sum of money on something brand new, look no further than some of these older ThinkPads. They're great machines, I've used them for a long time with very little issues, and there's a whole community out there of people that will help you if you have issues with them or want to do an upgrade. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.